It's time to present Scott DuPont to bring you another episode of Finance Your Movie with tips and strategies to help you get your money to tell your story. It's time! Okay, we're here today with Robert Ramos, the writer, director, producer of South Beach Shark Club. Welcome, Robert. Hey, Scott. How's it going? Happy to be here today. Good. And congratulations on your new film. Uh, it, I just saw the trailer last week. It looks amazing. Uh, we'll get into that in just a minute. But I um, want to talk about some of your um, your earlier films before that. Um, you did two shorts. You did a looks like a narrative and then a shark documentary short. Is that correct? That's correct. There's a couple other ones that probably up. Uh, they probably aren't up there on uh, IMDb, but yeah, that is correct. So I'm I'm guessing these shorts you self funded, you um, you did them low budget, twenty thirty minutes or whatever they were. You didn't bring investors yeah. on, correct? No, we didn't bring investors on for the shorts. Um, they were actually enabled by being at a uh, Miami Dade Community College at the film program there. So we had resources for, you know, camera rentals and gear rentals, all that. I was in production design pretty heavy back then. So um, I also also did the art direction, the editing, kind of wearing a lot of hats enabled us to make them, you know. Awesome. Awesome. Um, do you have a fascinating with sh fascination with sharks? Because I noticed you went to this really, really cool short about sharks to where we are today, South Beach Shark Club. Tell, tell me how this whole feature documentary evolved. Yeah, so um, I do have a fascination with sharks that stretches back to kind of like how a little kid might be obsessed with like fire trucks or, or, or trains or something. You know, I was obsessed with sharks. So somehow that's kind of stuck um, through a, a range of different careers. So like I used to actually work as a boat captain and I used to work as a diver, uh, fishing captain, all kinds of things like that on the water. Um, but in regards to the short film, um, yeah, we made that, that was my thesis film at Miami Dade College. And so we kind of like touched and explored this, this story to see if there's something there um, that people might be interested in. Fishing is not generally something that would translate well to the big screen. It, it can be kind of boring if you're doing it yourself. So we kind of had this idea of like, turning this fishing movie into like a skateboarding kind of movie, giving it an edge, kind of like Dogtown and Z-Boys and making it about, you know, the counterculture, making it about the city and kind of trying to bring in some excitement through the archival footage, things people have never seen before. And, you know, a kind of niche activity that most people aren't even aware of, like shark fishing specifically. So this was done pretty... I'm guessing it wasn't like a multi-million dollar film. I'm guessing you did it under 200 or under 250. Yeah, that, that's correct. Uh, it was a very low budget film. Um, a lot of in-kind, a lot of, uh, again, wearing a lot of different hats. I edited the film myself. Um, and actually, a, a, a funny story about uh, the feature film, um, the funding that we got for the archival footage and the licensing, which was the most expensive part of this movie, it oftentimes is with docs that came from my life as a captain. I actually had met someone on a fishing charter years ago and they came back into my life later. And, uh, they were actually the person that I tapped to invest in the movie on the tail end in post-production. Ah, ah, okay. So did you have some initial investor investors, uh, up front or just this one person who came in at the end where, that you had a connection to? Well, with, with the short film, we actually did quite well with it. We uh, signed a, uh, we licensed it to PBS, to the filmmaker uh, show. It aired locally and I think nationally sometime after that. And so we got a small check from that. We actually licensed out some of our own footage too, like extra footage. So there's always a lot of money in licensing. When I was paying out those licensing fees, I was like, maybe I should license some of my footage too that I'm not using. So we did that. And then uh, we had like a fundraiser. Um, where we, you know, we had like a, a silent auction. Uh, we tapped, you know, friends and family, all kinds of people that we wanted to come to this thing. And uh, we raised some money. And shortly after that, we actually were burglarized. Our studio was burglarized for the amount that we had raised. But, oh, my so, God. Yeah, believe it or not, it's just a, a, you know, this has been a story of perseverance uh, throughout all of it. 
And so, uh, yeah, I mean, we just always found a way somehow, kind of like the Miami Heat right now in the, the NBA Finals. <laughs> yeah. So um, getting back to the licensing fee, so you got this money from a, a bow captain or the guy you ran in circles with. He helped with all your post-production and I guess recouping some of the stolen money. Yeah. Um, what were some of the – like where did you license this footage? Was this from like – a, a service bureau or these individual captains that had photographs of these sharks or images? Well, a lot of it was donated from personal archives, which was another big part that enabled us to, to make this film, you know, on the low end. Um, so that was very cool. And we had some very unique stuff from that too, that no one had ever seen. Um, beyond that, we had to just scour the internet and scour these archives all over the place. Um, we also had the assistance of Miami Dade College that has their own archives for local news. So we were able to tap into that too. Um, yeah, it's just like, I mean, we were finding stuff down to a couple months out from premiering the film. That's how much stuff there is out there. And if you really start putting your nose in it and searching around, I mean, you'll find uh, what you're looking for, even if it's something so niche as, you know, what our film's about. So I just, cause this, this is very, very important to the audience listening of fil indie filmmakers. So some of the stuff you found on the internet, you would then contact whoever was listed under the picture and try to track them down and make a small donation or work some kind of deal? In some situations, yes. So we license footage from uh, individual photographers or drone operators even. Um, we license footage from bigger archives like um, Connus, which is, I believe, out of Michigan. And then also like some British archives, British Path, um kino library so those are some of the other ones some of them nature photography i think it's another one um so the, it's just a mix it's a giant file of just archives that we've licensed and uh yeah obviously you know we made sure to contact each one of them and to make sure we paid a fee or, or negotiate something with the individual yeah well congratulations because you got an amazing distributor vision films one of the top uh boutique uh distributors in all of hollywood so you're, you're with the right fit, and I really caution any documentary filmmakers, especially if, if you think you can kind of have a couple of images in there that you think are fair use or whatever, you got to get them all checked out because one, one picture that doesn't clear the uh, legal clearance review process could cost you a distribution deal. Sure, sure. I mean, I was uh, an expense of ours was a lawyer. We had a very good lawyer on this from before we had eyes on this movie, like in a public setting. And Sweet. obviously, yeah, obviously, once again, uh, before we distributed the film. So it's all part of it. It has to be worked into the budget, too, especially in a documentary film, especially in a film where there could be fair use or um, that you're using all this archival footage. You want to make sure you get it in perpetuity, especially once you get that distribution deal. And yeah, I would highly suggest seeking legal counsel to make sure that you do everything right. Don't try to do it on your own. It's worth the money. <laughs> yeah. So um, I, I want to kind of drill down a little bit on this one fishing cabinet, this guy you had a, a relationship. Did you um, you reach out to him and, and shared a business plan or did you just kind of have a heart to heart? Say, hey, our money got stolen. We just need more money for post. How, how did that all go down before you, you know, wrote, wrote a, a big check for you? Yeah, a little bit of all of it. Um, I mean, this was a this was not a, a fishing captain. This was a gentleman who was a client on the fishing boat that I had been part time oh, okay. working on. Yeah. So sometimes, you know, there are other gigs that would pay more than you know, paing on a on a on a small film set or something like that. And I would jump on a boat and work on it because I have that skill. Thank God. And uh, you know, I made this relationship with this client over the years, and we kind of became buddies. You know, I would go over to their house for dinner sometimes, and you know we just became friends. And so after a while of him seeing what I was doing, I showed him a cut of the film one day. He's like, this is amazing. You have to release this. What's holding you back. And you know, that's uh, the opportune time where I was like, Oh, well, you know, about a uh, 30, $40,000, but, and he cut me a check and that got us over the hump at the end. So awesome. I mean, and yeah. you never know if you don't ask. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you know, he asked me first, so <laughs> that, 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 makes, that makes it easier. I wish more people would ask me, but you never know yeah. if you don't ask. Or what you did, you put yourself in proximity. Sure. Right? You're hanging out with the right people. You're just being friendly. And when the time arises, 
people like to help out friends. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. And honestly, this entire movie from even the audience that we found and just the, even the word of mouth. And I mean, we won an audience award at the Miami International Film Festival. Um, it's all a bit about the community and the people that we know, everything about this movie. And it's also about that, too. So it kind of feeds into itself. It's part of, you know, the strategy of making a movie like this and then also marketing and putting the movie out there right now, like where we're at with it. Congrats. That must have been. Uh, was that a live screening? Yes, that was a live screening that we sold out at Miami International Film Festival. Shout out to them. That's like a hometown festival for us. You know, it's a dream. It was a dream to premiere there. It was like, you know, I grew up at the Miami Film Festival poster on my wall as a kid. So, yeah, they 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 really looked after us and the whole film community and the whole South Florida community at large looked out after us just because of the nature of our story. That that must have been off the hook just because of the nature of this doc. I mean, South Beach Sharks, the attacks, the, the, the grizzly photos. I mean, that audience must have been off the hook. Yeah, they were they're were pretty crazy. I mean, there was like, you know, you had skateboarders and surfers from back in the day there. You had like motorcycle gangs there or clubs. I'm sorry, can't use that <laughs> other word. Oh, they had a motorcycle club there. Um, you know, just tons of people hooting and hollering in that first screening. You know, I'm sure a lot of uh, the narrative was missed because there are so many people like yelling, just so excited to see this part of their life on screen that, you know, they probably haven't seen images from this time, you know, in 30 years, even longer, 40 years. Some of the stuff dates back as far as like the early 70s, late 60s. So pretty cool to have that audience there sold out one theater and uh, they had to open the theater across the hall for us, too. So, I mean, you can't it couldn't have gotten better for us in that premiere. Well, as as a filmmaker to you, congratulations that that's the most highest award at all selling out of theater so um i saw the trailer of south beach shark club i absolutely loved it i can't wait to see the film this week so for people listening or watching where can people go see the film uh people will be able to see the film on amazon voodoo google play apple tv and vimeo and and do you have do a general you... website as well yes the website is southbeachsharkclub.com and you can find more information there. And again, you'll see uh, the links to, to all the streaming platforms, as well as the IMDb, Rotten Tomatoes, Letterboxd. Go ahead and give it a review, however you felt about it. We'd love to hear it. Awesome. Yeah, those reviews really help. Um, what's the best way if people just want to follow you on social media or, or connect with you? Um, you can follow me at Rob, R-O-B, Rec, R-E-Q, as I like to say it, Rams, R-A-M-S on Instagram. And you can follow the film at South Beach Shark Club on Instagram as well. Awesome. Um, I wish you all the very best. We always ask our guests any parting words of wisdom for people trying to raise uh, production funds for the movie. You gave some great advice about just being really, really careful about all the um, the clearances for the archival video film uh pictures and stuff the uh the entertainment lawyer but in terms of actually getting the money any any words of advice for someone who hasn't done their first feature yet but they're getting they're going out there to raise the money sure i mean there's a couple things but i would say try to find a story that's close enough in proximity to you that you feel like or a story that people around you would be interested in so then you know they might want to invest in it. They might want to be a part of it. I would also say to make sure you have a diverse skill set so that you don't, you just don't know, like, you know, you're not just the writer and the director, you're the editor, you do the, be the colorist. I mean, you're going to have to wear multiple hats. And then also finally, I would say, please try to save whatever money you do get for a little marketing at the end, because it's very important also to, you know, if you're lucky enough to get the distribution deal and get all this stuff going, get an audience for your film, save a little money for marketing. It's well worth it. Just do it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you took your own advice because you got an amazing distributor. Um, it was marketed to me. It just it just popped up uh, one of my emails. So everybody should go see South Beach Shark Club. Uh, go to sharkbeachsouthclub.com, correct? South South Beach Shark Club. It's a little bit of a tongue twister. but Southbeachsharkclub.com. It, it's also... Correct. 
Okay. Uh, Robert, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. And I wish you all the best on the release of this film and your next film ahead. Thank you so much, Scott. It was a blast. Thanks. Thanks for listening. And remember, it's time! There's never been a better time to make your own indie film. And if you have a dream project you're excited about and 100% committed to getting it funded, go to financeyourmovie.com and click on the green telephone button. You'll see our calendar, and if you find an open spot, grab it. You'll get a one-on-one -on -one call with me or one of my partners. It will be the best hour you've ever spent getting clarity and strategy towards financing your movie. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you next week.